Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AxesTrade.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is having a glorious, glorious, glorious weekend. Uh, finally some sun in the Northeast, especially New Jersey. It feels like it's been like raining nonstop. It's like, I feel like almost every weekend now I'm giving you guys a weather report. Nobody cares, but mentally it's kind of enough. We're ready to go to spring and onward to summer with warmer and nicer weather. So hopefully you guys are having a beautiful weather wherever you are, and hopefully you guys are having a great time just enjoying life. So let's talk about some things, right? I started trading right before the really big boom of something known as the dot-com, right? Everybody knows about the dot-com, the big dot-com bubble and the whole big thing, and it was great, and it was great, but it only lasts like 15 months, okay? That's the reality. People think it lasts like five, 10 years. It only lasts like 15 months. Maybe, maybe two, if you could stretch it out, maybe 18 months, okay, depending depending when you started. And the one thing that I remember during that time, like during the middle of the whole internet run and the whole euphoria was so many people, because they heard about what was going on, were leaving their jobs, okay, whether they were firemen, um, security analysts, uh, waiters, what, whatever their jobs was, some attorneys, I remember that we, we uh, came with trade with us. Um, so people were leaving their jobs because they heard about the, the massive fortunes everybody was making. Okay, first of all, not everybody was making fortunes, let's be honest here. Um, and I think back then, if I had a bet, I think back then, probably 80% of the people still were making money. And that was probably the most miraculous time that you could have possibly started trading. Because again, I've said this and I never. I never hit this or you know minimizes any way. Nobody knew what the hell they were doing, right? Like nobody knew what they were doing. Stock was up 10, you take it overnight, hopefully it'll gap up another 10, right? And you kept on doing this over and over and over again. So nobody knew how to trade. But the fact that people heard about it and people, it was all over the news and stocks were going from five to 500 in 30 seconds and all that great stuff, it, were, it made people really get very, very aggressive get very, very greedy, and they want it in, right? They want it in. And I remember I remember one time uh, our office in Generic was at 12, 1270 Avenue of America. It was the Radio City uh, Music Hall building. And I remember I was going to meet a couple of my buddies downtown in Soho. So I took a cab, okay? I took a cab, and we went downtown, and the cab driver turned to me. He turned to me and goes, do you play the stock market? And I was like, what? Well, he goes, well, I do. He goes, I like this. I'm, you know, so you had the cab drivers, right? You had literally cab drivers giving you stock picks. And it was the most amazing time because, number one, nobody thought it was ever going to end. And number two, everybody wanted a piece of the action. The problem was, again, I mean, these are people you know, had no idea what the stock market was, but they wanted it. It was almost kind of like the Bitcoin thing that you guys uh, saw in the last couple of years. Everybody wanted it at any price. Just get me in, get me in, get me in. And the problem was nobody knew how to trade. And... Obviously, everybody knows what happens. The dot, com, uh, the dot com bubble burst. Nobody knew how to trade again. Everybody lost a lot of their money on the way down because, again, the market can't go lower. It'll never go lower. How can you possibly think of lower? Just keep on buying the dip and everything will be okay. So a lot of people got destroyed. A lot of people bought the dip and kept on dipping. So they wiped out a lot of fortunes. And most people left the business because, again, you know whatever goes up must go down. And most bubbles usually end the same way. Fast forward to 2003, right? And one thing that I always talk about, and I make a lot of references, uh, whether it's the video here or the video uh, or the live webinar that I speak seven hours a day, I make a lot of a lot of correlating points between uh, poker and trading. Right? There's a lot of similarities. Um, the psychology behind it, uh, the risk management, uh, the overall mental makeup, your, your whole foundation. There's a lot of moving parts that are are, are crossed, right? Are crossed, and they are the same. And I remember in 2003. Uh, was almost like the second coming of the internet craze. And it had nothing to do with trading. It was with poker, right? And what happened in 2003? In 2003, the first non-professional guy by the name of Chris Moneymaker went and won the World Series of Poker, okay? Won like a million bucks, whatever it was. I think it was like a million bucks. And that started 
a chain of events that everybody wanted to play poker, right? And you guys remember, oh, I almost had a, to the point that I almost started playing poker. I was messing around a little bit online and blah, blah, blah. But everybody wanted to play poker. This is it. The average Joe, the guy who everybody counted out, instead of getting a real job, let's create our own job, right? We're going to be professional poker players. We're going to be professional stock traders. We're going to be our own boss. That's the dream, right? That's the independence. That's the dream. Sitting at home, drinking a Mai Tai in your sweatpants while you're making millions of dollars. This is the joy and this is the dream. Again, unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. And unfortunately, the two paths of people that caught this euphoria from the internet bug, from the professional online poker, right, tours and all that stuff, it ended up exactly the same way. These were novice people that were getting into both of these professions, or at least I, it's very, very hard to call them professions at the time, but getting into the same similar fields, and they had a lot of things in common. There was no background, okay? There was absolutely no background that most people went into these businesses. No background, no reason to have any type of money management skills. There was absolutely no thought process behind, well, wait, what happens if I can't make money? How do I pay my bills? Well, maybe I shouldn't have quit my job. Maybe I shouldn't have given that income. Maybe I shouldn't have put myself in the place that if I'm going one, two, three, four weeks without making any money, how is my family going to survive? Unfortunately, many traders or, and many poker players at that time or aspiring poker players at that time, they didn't care. We wanted the piece of the pie. We wanted to be the millionaire, the multimillionaire, the gazillion, trillion, bazillionaire that sits at home again, drinking Mai Tais uh, in our fluffy pajamas and, and, and furry Uggs, right? That's the American dream. Well, that's the worldwide dream. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. And the problem with every single type of bubble, and again, probably Bitcoin included, I never traded Bitcoin, I never had a, any want or you know any feel towards it because I just don't understand what the hell it is. Um, but there's a lot of similarities that every some odd years, 5, 10, 15 years, a new phenomenon comes up, okay? And it's exactly the same cycle. People quitting their jobs because they hear their neighbor made 100, 200, 300, 400, 500,000 dollars. It's life changing. Everything is great and everything's amazing and we're going to make billions and gazillions of dollars. And the problem is it's the same. It's, it really is the same carousel over and over again. No education virtually no money, right? Virtually no money, no education, no foundation, no plan B, giving up their job. Let's play. It's, it's one big Powerball drawing. And unfortunately, it all ends the same way. And I, I hear this from new traders all the time. And, and again, I, and look, I have an online business like 30 million other people. Okay. I don't market to the small trader. I don't market to the new trader. They're, everybody's welcome. God bless. But I don't market because again, I understand how many barriers you're up against. But there's a common denominator, and, when, and I'm more than happy to help anybody, any trader out, right? Any tra I'll help you out as much as I can because, again, I understand your mental makeup. I understand where you're coming from, and I understand how so many people are desperate because they don't have a plan B. But the one thing that you have to have now, and you have to learn your lessons from the past from the Chris Moneymaker phenomenon, from the dot-com phenomenon, from the start of the whole Bitcoin phenomenon, hell, even the tulips, right? Remember everybody saw those damn tulips that, that had a big rig run and, and crashed? You have to learn your lessons, okay? When you're starting a business or a trading business or any type of business, you have to have several things that you're going to need to be successful. Number one, you need money. Okay, I, I, I can't emphasize this enough. I, I hear this all over social media with the small account challenges and this, you could turn five. No, you can't. You can't. Okay, you can't. Yeah, you could turn $500 into $600, maybe $500 into $800. You can't take $500 and be a professional trader. It's just reality. It's like trying to open up a steakhouse and you, you're going to, you're, you're opening up a steakhouse and the architect and the accountants and everybody is going to tell you it's going to cost you minimum $300,000 to open up the steakhouse to, to make sure you have the proper staff, the proper uh, everything, right? Enough money in the bank to survive. And you turn around and say, well, I have $800. I want to start a steakhouse. Okay. Look, when I was younger, I wanted to, you know, I wanted to date supermodels. Some things, you know, I want a lot of things. You can't have them if you don't have a specific plan. 
And when new traders are getting into the business, again, they're underfunded. Okay, they're they're jumping on the euphoria because again, I can't have my I can't find a job. I want to create my own. Look, can you build an account? Absolutely. Okay, you can build an account, but don't think for a second. Okay, and I'm not saying this to discourage anybody because I want everybody to win. But when you're hearing these stories on social media about kids, okay, kids taking $500 and turning to $3 million, it's ridiculous. Okay, it's ridiculous. No adult is going to turn around and say, well, maybe they could do it too, and I could do it too. Look, look. Can you trade with, with a smaller account? I think you could put on trades, right? I think you could put on trades. And again, before somebody emails me, well, I turned two thousand. Okay, you don't need to email me. I don't care. God bless. If you can do it, you can do it. But but again, educate yourself. Put yourself in a position that you, if you're going to trade for a living, okay, number one, you have income, right? You need income coming in because if you have no income coming in and your account is not fully funded, and again, that's a relative statement. The more money, the better, obviously. If you don't have if you don't have a full-time job with income, your trading is going to suffer because, again, number one, you're not fully funded. Number two, you're going to start seeing the pressures and start feeling the pressures of everyday life, right? Your bills, your phone bill, your car bill, your kids got to eat, your kids got to need, need clothes, right? You got to pay for gas, everyday life. So before you start running into a phenomenon and you hear about the pot stocks going crazy and, uh, you know, God knows what else, whatever's hot these days. The pot stock is going nuts and this is going nuts. You really need a set foundation. You need money. Okay. You need money. That's just the bottom line. When you're trading, you need, you need money. Again, you're not going to open up a steakhouse and save yourself money by serving a $49, $56 porterhouse steak on paper dishes. It's just not going to happen. You're not going to have any business. People are going to look at you like you have five heads. Okay. So you need money when you're starting to trade. Okay. It's just the reality. Your first two years, because again, and I tweeted this out, again, not to discourage anybody, this is the reality. I don't, I don't sell fantasy world. This isn't Gilligan's Island. This isn't fantasy island. This is, this is real life, okay? You're going to suffer the first two, three years. It's just the reality, okay? Every single trader suffers their first two, three years because again, this is all new to you, okay? Your emotions cannot correlate to what you're seeing in the stock market. The fast price action cannot be tied into what you're feeling and what you're possibly can accept and, and mentally figure out what is this emotional carnage, okay? So you're going to get emotionally destroyed the first two, three years, okay? So it's not a point that you can't do it. Of course, there's always exceptions, but take that into effect. Because if I told you, okay, if I told you it's going to take you 7 to 10 to 12 to 15 years to really accept the idea that losing money is okay, if you can't accept that from day one, you're probably going to have a very, very tough time being a professional trader because that's the reality, okay? It took me, Jesus, well, I'm on year 20. It took me a good 10, 11 years just to get comfortable losing money, to finally figure it out, you know what, it's the cost of doing business, it's part of, you know, it's part of the business, it's part of everyday life, and it's just the reality. And unfortunately, when you have a small account, or when you have um, an account that's not fully funded, and again, fully funded account doesn't need to be a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars $200,000, it could be thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000, but you need a fully account that you can trade without any type of restriction, you're going to face a lot of things that is going to derail your, uh, uh, your, your, your education, your ability to, you know, to process information. And that's the sad part about it because, again, I understand the desperation. I understand how everybody wants to trade, right? It's the easiest business to get into. It's the easiest business to leave. And it's the hardest business to come back because you're already emotionally scarred. And unfortunately, for many traders, because you are digesting bad information your first you know, year, two years, and three years, you're really going backwards and you're self-sabotaging yourself. So for all those people who get these alerts and alerts and shorts, all you need to do is have technical analysis in front of you. But pe again, people don't want to hear that, okay? They want to hear, it's a free-for-all, everybody's going to be rich, I'm going to be in my pajamas with the furry Uggs, everything's going to be okay. Shut up, Shapiro, you don't know anything. And maybe I don't, maybe I do. Again, I get these emails all the time, how can I make this work? How can I make this work? So I figured, hey, listen, let me just tell you guys how to make it work. And the easiest way, folks, and I'm telling you right now, and again, this is geared to the new trader, okay? Again, you might not want to hear the answer, but if somebody keeps on asking me, how do I build a small account? Get a job. Get a job. If the easiest thing to do, right, during market hours is your job the first two, three years is try to really get and absorb as much information as possible, understand how order flow works, understand the pure basics of technical analysis, 
Understand the pure basics of money management. Understand the pure basics of psychology. This is what you're all trying to grasp the first two, three years. You're not trying to make a fortune. You're trying to figure out how the pawns move, how the rook moves, right? How the queen moves. You're not trying to figure out how can I be the next Bill Gates. You're not going to be the next Bill Gates. You're not going to be the next Warren Buffett. You're just trying to figure out how to make it to the next day, okay? And the easiest thing to do is complain about how you have a small account. The hardest thing to do is just say, well, wait a minute. Instead of me trying to take a thousand dollar account and build it, well, why don't I just get a job after the close, right? Especially you guys who are living like on the West Coast, you're done by one o'clock. Okay, you're literally done by one o'clock. There's absolutely no reason you can't drive Uber, drive Lyft, become a waiter, uh, work at telemarketings, work at Starbucks, work at Whole Foods, uh, drive a truck, whatever it takes you have to do. And I hear this all the time, I'll do anything, I'll do anything. And I had a guy, just to give you an idea, I had a guy two years ago in the live webinar that came in with like $23,000, right? That was his account. And he goes, Dan, I'm, 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 I'm dying here. And I'm only restricted to three, you know, for you know, three trades a week, whatever the pattern day trading rule is. I'm dying here. What do I do? What do I do? I'm like, dude, you only have two grand to, you know, two, three grand to, to get in, which is get a job. Well, you know, I don't know. Look, it's a fine line. You're either pregnant or you're not. Okay. You can't be halfway pregnant. You either want to become a trader aspire to become a trader and get your ducks in a row or you're wasting your time. Again, you're not enabled. Nobody's going to just put money in your, in your hand and say, Hey, you go, here is your dream. I'm going to make you, you know, I'm going to put you to the position that you're going to, you're going to live out your dream. It's all on you. It's all on us guys. Nobody's going to give you anything. Okay. I'm telling you right now, nobody's going to give you everything. It's a, an incredibly, just ridiculously tough business, ridiculously tough business. And again, I'm not saying this, to discourage everybody, this is just the reality. So don't you think, okay, don't you think, and I know everybody wants to become a trader, but don't you think for a second, okay, wouldn't it be wise to try to take the easiest path to the goal line, right? Put yourself in a position that, you know what, let me figure out this game first. Let me move, let me figure out the moving parts first. And then maybe two, three, four years later, as I build up my account with maybe a part-time job, driving Uber, becoming a waiter, Whatever the case may be, to put an extra $500, $1,000 in your bank account uh, after taxes, and maybe in another year, maybe another two years, I could save $25,000, $30,000 instead of sitting there wasting your time with a $1,000 account trying to make $18 a trade. It's counterproductive. It doesn't make sense. And what you're doing within that time, you're creating so many bad habits, chasing these stocks of 900% in a day chasing candles, doing this, doing that, that what you're doing is you're retarding your process. And by the time two, three years roll around, you're just spinning your, you know, you're spinning your wheels and you're getting absolutely nowhere. And in that process, and again, I see this all over social media. I destroyed three accounts already and you're doing the same thing. I destroyed 12 accounts or anything, but you're still doing the same thing. Oh, I blew up, but I, this time I figured it out, but you're doing the same thing. How do you expect to get anywhere if you continuously do the same thing over and over and over again? with no money, right? With no money, no education, all bad habits. And you're expecting this miraculous thing to happen that one day you're just gonna wake up and say, oh, okay, now I get it. It's just, unfortunately, life is not fair. Trading is not fair and you have to wake up. Okay, these are, these are words I wish to God somebody told me from 2001 after the internet came crazy, who came and left and 9-11 came and left and I was destroyed and I was mentally disturbed and I was incredibly, incredibly in mental pain and I didn't make money for two years. I wish somebody sat down and shook me and just said, listen to me, you gotta wake up, get your ass, get a job. If you wanna stay in this business, stay in the business, but do what you have to do to keep going. And it took me a long, long time to stop feeling sorry for myself and, and finally starting to get focused. And again, guys, for all you aspiring traders, Get your ducks in a row. The stock market's been around for ages. You don't think the stock market's going to be around for two, three more years, right? For you to get all your ducks in a row so you could actually enter this business the proper way, okay? Again, if you go to medical school, okay, day one, you're not a doctor, right? I, I don't know about you, but the first, you know, the first kid coming out of medical school, I personally wouldn't let them do an operation on my, on my knee. Just saying, right? Just because you're, you're called a doctor doesn't mean you're a doctor. Just because you have a trading account doesn't make you a trader. So it's very, very important to really understand and digest all the moving parts, all the nuances of trading, because if you don't, 
unfortunately, you're going to spin your wheels, you're gonna burn your capital, you're gonna burn your mental capital, and unfortunately, you're going to become a statistic. So guys, I implore you, I beg you for all you new traders, I know you're excited, I know you want in, I know you wanna you know, live the lifestyle, and social media is great and all that stuff. Unfortunately, for any trader who's been tr you know, trading for at least a decade, they will tell you and echo the same sentiment that I've been saying for the last 15, 20 minutes, it's so important to make sure all your ducks in a row because you're gonna have a very, very tough time achieving your goal. So hopefully that uh, helps out. If not, I apologize, believe me, I don't wanna discourage anybody, it's just the reality. Again, I don't talk about fantasy, I talk about reality and hopefully uh, some of you guys will really you know, get the light bulb and you know, take the necessary steps uh, to kind of start your process the right way to be a professional trader. So where we are in the markets, right? We got four weeks now, right? Four weeks now of uh, the Dow Jones going down, right? Amazing. Who even noticed this, right? Obviously, everybody did because, again, the China headlines, trade on war, trade off war. Trump is great. Trump sucks. Trump bullish tweets. Trump bearish tweets. Blah, 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 blah. What I liked about this week compared to last week, OK, last week we saw a deadline, right? We saw the deadline that Trump put in and the White House put in, whatever the case may be. And they said, well, by Friday, if we don't, you know, if you don't get a deal done, tariffs are going to be up 9 million percent and everybody's going to die because nobody's going to money. Right. And the market was going up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Every single headline was going crazy. Uh, charts didn't matter. Technical analysis didn't matter. It was a, it was like a free for all. It was a circus. And, and, and I knew going into this weekend, right, I knew going into this weekend, people were going to have kind of a digestion session, kind of really balance out and really start really thinking about these headlines. And this week, technical analysis came back. OK, it came back. The market saw much better structured appeal than it did the previous week. And we saw some really smoother plays, right? Like breakouts from the daily point of view, breakouts from a mid-tier point of view, breakdowns from levels of reversals, bounce plays, rejection plays, because again, it's only, trading is only as good as the market structure. And this week, despite uh, indexes being lower, you had the NASDAQ down a percent and change, um, you had the S&P down a little less than percent, the Dow a little less, less than percent. But there was some really good action, okay? Until we had that, really big reversal on Friday. We started getting a little bit of clues on that on Thursday. We'll talk about that in a second. But what I liked about it is there was good follow through. Okay. And it wasn't just like follow through 20, 30 cents. There was follow through uh, in multi-tier moves, multi-dollar moves, and a lot of volume came in on those names that got confirmed the proper way. What I didn't like what I saw, and maybe I'm early to the table. What I didn't like what I saw this week was if you look what happened Thursday session into Friday. Okay, look, look at the 60 minute channels, guys. I want to show you guys something. Okay, Tesla, I, you know, Tesla, I think is going low. Okay, Tesla's going low. We'll talk about the individual plays in a second. But what, 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 I, what I didn't like from the bearish, from the bullish point of view, Thursday into Friday, you had NVIDIA, really good aggressive earnings, right? Stocks up like eight, nine points. Conference call started. They sold the stock off only to rally it to sell it off. Alibaba, right? Alibaba as well had a big, big run up. They took it down, big, big run up, brought it down. 60 minute channels collapsed. They got went lower. And then you started seeing things like Amazon, for example. Amazon was very, very strong. Matter of fact, if you look at my last pivot, right? My last pivot on Amazon, it was right around here. We'll talk about that in a second. And I said, well, 1902, if it gets 1902, we can start moving back up. And it needs to really, really claim 1910. So you had, eight, you know, you had a really good eight, nine dollar candle. And then, you know, I left for the day around 3, 3 o'clock, 3.30, whatever it was. And you had this really massive, nasty sell-off. And the more I kept on looking at, at charts, the more I kept on looking at groups like the semiconductors, you saw some really ugly charts, right? If you look at the semiconductors, and the video had some bad earnings, blah, 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 blah. But, you, you know, you look at the semiconductors like microchip, uh, Intel, right? Like, I mean, these are some ugly-ass charts, right? Uh, you look at CLAC, right? You look at CLAC. Um, you know, you look at, uh, let me see AMD, no, not AMD, but you kind of get the picture. You see a lot of these charts that are really, really ugly. And if you look how many of these semiconductors are represented in the NASDAQ 100, it's going to be a really telltale sign combined with the ugly reversal that we saw on Friday to, to really put everybody on alert that, you know, they could pull the market really, really hard uh, this week. Again, it could. I'm always playing devil's advocate because I don't believe in the whole 
well, it's a rose colored glasses. Everything's good, all good in the world. Buy the dip, buy the dip. Yeah, buy the dip only works in the bull market. Remember that. If they're, bull, and they're, if they're pulling your card off of a channel, off of a higher channel, right, off a rolling top, that buy the dip doesn't work. Trust me. That's what happens when you have a 650 point sell off and then the following day it does that again. So it's very, very important to understand that. Basically, technically, though, right, when you look at technically, there's nothing really wrong, right? Technically, there's nothing really wrong. Uh, the Q's had a big, big run off the bottom, held up 178, got rejected off the 10-day moving average, and now they're kind of sitting in this baby channel, and you say to yourself, well, it's not really hard to understand. To the upside, if it reclaims 186, we go higher. To the downside, they reclaim 182, we go low. So that's a very, very, you know, that's a very, very easy channel to understand. Again, 86 to the upside, 82. Again, there's no room for interpretations here. It's either going to break up or it's going to break down. But the most important part is what happened on Friday, right? And I didn't like the fact how aggressive. Again, I can understand Amazon going lower. I didn't really understand and digest why Amazon would put up a $25 individual candle, right? If you look at Roku, it broke out on Friday. And look at the candles it put up towards the end of the day. So there was a obvious, obvious buyer strike on the buy the, dip, buy the dip theory. And the key for this week is, well, let's see what happens next. It's not what happens, it's what happens next. And the most important part is, guys, again, don't overthink. Just watch those levels, right? Understand semiconductors a week. Understand that a lot of beta reversed. Understand that a lot of names that we trade all the time, the Alibabas, the videos of the world, they were very, very strong and they got pulled, right? They got pulled. So understand all that. And again, this 182 area gets confirmed on the queues, we're going to go lower. Uh, overall, a uh, pretty solid uh, pretty solid week, uh, pretty solid day on Friday. Again, I say this all the time, folks, the market doesn't care, okay? The market doesn't care how good you are, how nice of a person you are, what's your background. It doesn't care. You're either going to make money or you're not. And the same thing with technical analysis. It doesn't care your opinion, right? Alibaba going higher, Alibaba going lower. Tesla's going higher, Tesla's going lower. So when I put these channels, and I put these channels, obviously, in the live webinar and on the Twitter feed, okay, it's very simplistic. We're either going to confirm the top or we're going to confirm the bottom. And sometimes when I say top or bottom, it means the sneaky area in the middle, which, again, is a whole conversation for another different day. But the most important part is when you're trading technically, okay, you don't need anybody in the trade because the market's going to tell you if you're going to be wrong or right. And if you look at Friday's session, pretty aggressive, okay, really, really aggressive. Um, and again, you know, here's, here's, the whole, you know, here's the whole feed uh, from Friday. This is what you guys are looking at is uh, the stock twits feed. It's exactly the same feed as the Twitter feed. Um, the only thing I don't post, again, the only thing I don't post in these channels uh, on the Twitter feed and the stock twits feed or all the bounce plays we have and the rejection plays we have, because I just want to uh, treat these channels strictly for pivots. So if you look at Friday's session, again, we're not omitting anything. These are the pivots. They're either, they're either right or they're going to be wrong. So you had TMDX, uh, too, way too thin for me, but uh, TMDX, I said, look, if this thing could get above 29, it can go stock traded. I didn't realize, how, I apologize. I didn't realize how thin the stock was, but again, a chart is a chart is a chart. If you did take it, God bless. I have no interest in this thing. Uh, went from 29 to, to 30, looks higher. Um, so NVIDIA, the first move on NVIDIA, uh, 58 and a quarter held twice. If it builds below, it can flush. Uh, first move wasn't big. Uh, first move wasn't big at all. It was like a dollar and change. But here's your, you know, here's a 58 and a quarter, right? 58 and a quarter, 58 and a quarter. It broke that 58 and a quarter, went down like a dollar and change. Again, not a big move. But again, not every single trade needs to be this mother of all trades. Sometimes cash flow is just cash flow. Uh, Deer, again, came out of earnings, uh, according to Kramer, not a big surprise. But again, if it wasn't a big surprise, hell, you should have been all in on this trade. But again, surprise. Uh, Deer held uh, 138.50 twice. If it builds below, it can flush. And you look at Deer, here's the 138.50 right here, 138.50. And it broke the 38.50 and it went all the way down to 33. Good job for those of you guys who caught that as well. Uh, Beyond, talk about, you know, talk about, you know, talk about a quinky deal, right? So Beyond was a massive, massive runner all week. We had like four or five different pivots on it all week to the long side. And then finally, it started reversing, <clears throat> put in an initial low, 88.50, 88.00. The bills below can flush. Ironically, Citron comes and says, this is getting beyond stupid. You got to love that, right? Very original. This is getting beyond stupid. It's a 40% short interest. So the initial move was like down to 85. God knows what happens to this thing. Uh, AMAT, we actually traded it off of 44. 
Um, and the reason why, I, I, I just had a small little trade on this thing. Uh, 44 was the top of this candle right here. And I cheated a little bit. I, I knew it was 44.30 because those are the two candles uh, off the 60 minute 60 minute highs in pre-market. But I wanted to see if it could confirm that uh, that um, uh, 60 minute channel. So we, we got along at 44 and it went to like 44.20. It just stalled out there. And I knew if it stalled out, it was going to come back down. So I made a little bit of sales. Who cares? A little bit of cash flow. Um, here was the big one, right? So here was the big one. First of all, we're seeing tons of put buyers all over the place. You know, August 200s, August 205s, August 207.5s, 195s. Big, big put buying on, on Tesla everywhere. And again, like I say this all the time, our opinions don't matter. You think Tesla's a fraud? That's great. You think Tesla's going to 5,000? That's wonderful. But ranges don't care. There are no bias on these pivots. And I wrote, here it is, 225 to the upside. 219 to the downside. That's it. That's the rest of the day. And this is where I got short on Tesla, the 219 area. And it got just absolutely destroyed. For all you guys who caught it in the afternoon from 217 all the way down to 208, congratulations. I know a lot of people uh, emailed me. I know Herb uh, caught a big, big option play on this thing. I think he bought the 200 puts, uh, really did well with it. So good job there. So Tesla got absolutely mangled. Look, I think the stock is going lower. I think the stock is going lower. Uh, we'll see about that, but I think the stock is going lower. Uh, Roku, congratulations on Roku. Uh, 85 build, important, huge area needs to build. Uh, Roku just 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 flew, right? Here's the whole 85 channel, and the stock went to 87. Uh, Amazon, uh, again, needs to reclaim 1902. Again, again, not every single trade needs to be amazing. Here was the 1902 right here, right? Here's the candle, the highest candle in the supply. Took out 1902 and traded right to 19, almost 1911. And I knew that area is going to be important because it, it got rejected off the channel here. But again, seven, eight points is seven, eight points. Again, there's nothing wrong with that. And I believe that was the last candle of the day. And I kept on tweeting, you know, I kept on putting into these channels. Look at all the put buyers. And these are the small put buys, right? This is, these are the really small put buys for next week's weeklies, right? You got the 207 and a half, the 205s, the 205s, the 210s. I think Tesla goes lower. Let's talk about that right now. So let me give you guys some ideas uh, for uh, Monday. Again, I, I like Tesla. I know a lot of you guys in the live webinar are long uh, the 200 puts. I think the stock goes lower. Uh, it broke down. Uh, broke down. Uh, there's two ways to play it, either green to red or below uh, this 208 area. If it gaps below that, then obviously we're going to be looking at uh, opening range lows. I, listen, I think the stock, I, I think there's a very, very good chance uh, that the stock test 200 again might might not test it this week, but I think there is a very very good chance uh, that does, the Tesla does trade uh, to that 200 level. Um, I like Baidu short. Uh, they blow up on earnings. Um, you know, I think two ways to play it if you're aggressive: uh, green to red or a breakdown below this uh, 126.90 level. Uh, that looks good. You guys remember MGNX, right? You guys remember that MGNX? MGNX came out this. Really, really massive, like I think FDA news, and the stock I don't think has an uptick ever since then. It's just been going down straight since February. I kind of like it, right? I kind of like it. You know, if this thing starts building around 19, right? If this thing could start building around 19, again, I'm not saying it's gonna go up here, but there's a shot it goes. Stock closed at 1870, your maximum risk of about 30 cents in the trade. Keep an eye on that. Um, I like this AGYS, uh, looks interesting as well, breaking out here on some pretty good volume. Uh, so keep an eye on this. I like it above this uh, 2150 area if it starts building, keep an eye on that. And the rest of the stuff, guys, we'll, we'll, we'll obviously talk about this uh, during the live webinar. Please get to Morning Strategy early if you're joining us on the Twitter feed and you work full time. That's a great, great place. Uh, to uh, stay in touch with the community because, again, number one, you're getting all the pivots uh, and you are getting the nightly video with the option flow uh, and all that other good stuff, right? All that other good stuff that comes with it. And for all you guys who are joining us in the live webinar, please get there. We start morning strategy roughly five minutes after nine. So, guys, God bless everybody. Have a great day. Again, I want the new traders to win, okay? I want you guys to win. I don't want to discourage you. But again, you, you can't have that social media mentality. You've got to wipe it out of your head and really take this business for what it is. So it's an adult business. And if you're trading with kids, you're going to have kids' results. Just think about that when we log off. Guys, have a great, great weekend. Enjoy your life. God bless. I'll see you on the field. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. 
you're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.